Hi everybody, this is Ken Calhoun from TradeMastery.com wishing you the very best for a happy, relaxing 4th of July weekend here in 2017. Welcome to the channel that's all about helping you potentially become more successful in your active trades by turning things around. Now recently with the stock market in decline, you've got to have a really smart strategy to keep you out of bad trades and in on good trades. So let's take a look at this week's broadcast from Trading Week Ahead coming up next. Active traders and welcome to our trading week ahead broadcast 4500 we broke the 4500 mark so we got over 4500 and now six people who've registered for these events making them the number one in industry so thanks so much you folks have been amazing in your loyalty and your support I wanted to thank you for taking a bit of time out of your Saturday to work with me today for our trading week ahead live market forecast we'll look at key support and resistance levels in the S&P several top day and swing trading charts uh, oil and gold and much more all in the next 20 minutes. So let's get underway here. As always, all information is for educational use only. We're not making advice about what to buy, sell, or hold. By watching this, you agree not to make actual trades. It's all to teach you some of the patterns that professional traders like to use. And again, use a demo or sim account until you get profitable, right? Be careful with that. Our quote of the week. I used to work for the Ford Motor Company, so Quote from old Henry Ford, coming together is the beginning, keeping together, like these events, is progress, but actually working together is success. And so I encourage you to join my live trading room at tradingtheopen.com or my swing trading events at Swing Scans. Hey, also too, before we take a look at the videos, I wanted to thank all of you for participating in this. So with that, let's get on with it already, Ken. What's going on in the markets? Uh, they're selling, right? We've been in a downtrend the last couple of weeks. I'm looking to go into our inverse ETFs if we start to get under the 50 SMA at 2410. My key SNR levels are 2458 for R1. Okay, I want to wait for a new high breakout above a false breakout region. So 2458. I don't want to speculatively buy into a bounce here because it's the market's been broken the last couple of weeks. It's fallen and it can't get up. Boom. Epic fail. He shoots, he scores, the crowd goes wild. The, the short trigger, the S1 is 2402. And the reason for that is it's right under this uh, bullish lower shadow, this large candle, large red sell-off candle. Four out of five. Here's another quick professional trader's tip. Look at the color of the candles to give you the overall directional bias. I'm a big fan of keeping things simple. For example, we have four out of five of the last candles are red. That's not good for the stock market, right? We got four to five candles on the red side going down. Uh, and we are in a technical downtrend, right? So we're coming down off the earlier highs. What's going on in our commodity sectors? Let's take a look. Uh, oil is bouncing. All things that's... Let me show you guys the tickers here so you can... Follow along at home. Look at the Nike chart in just a minute, but first... All things oil. I follow these for you guys weekly. U USO, UCO, oil, oil holders. So I'm long bias oil. It's Reader's Digest version. All I got time for. Gold is a short bias, right? Gold has all been going down. These are all gold miners and junior miners. You can see they're all headed down. So our the play is long in dust. If it's That's the inverse gold instrument if dust takes out new highs. It's been on the uptrend the last whole week. In case that missed your eyes or you didn't see it, my favorite one to cover for you guys this week is FNF. This has gone from 42 up to 45. One of the keys to professional, the correct way to trade, is to always anticipate a false breakout at a whole number. You can't just simply buy new highs. That's destined to fail. What you need to do is learn from me how to potentially avoid false breakouts. You may have seen my industry articles at equities and stocks and commodities or my money show appearances and all that. Add 50 cents or so, kind of the read, this quick giveaway. What I do is I'll eyeball the chart and add 50 cents to a whole number. So for example, I would be interested in FNF, and, F, and this is not a trade recommendation, but what I will likely be doing is buying this guy if it breaks 45.50. You should always anticipate a false breakout at right near a whole number within the first 10 or 20 cents, 
right? You'll often see it runs up just enough to get the dumb money or the public money or the people or newbie traders who haven't learned from me or haven't read all of my copious industry articles and videos on the topic. Uh, there's going to be a false breakout. So you can't just simply buy new highs. You can't do simplistic breakout trading. You have to have a little more sophistication. But the good news is you don't need to put a lot of thought into it. Just eyeball a chart and add anywhere from 30 to 50 cents above the previous high before you get in. We're in an uptrend continuation in Kroger off its big epic bounce off the Whole Foods Market Amazon buyout news that led to its swift demise back on the 15th and 16th. This guy gapped from 30 all the way down to 21. Can you say oversold? Well, that's what the street thinks, obviously, right? What you don't do is try and buy the first sign of a dead cat bounce. Wow! Epic fail, because that would have led to disaster. But the bounce the second time's the charm, and it's held support. And what I like about Kroger is it's been in an uptrend the last three weeks or so, right? So the institutional guys aren't coming in to pound it down short. So I'm going to look to buy this guy if it does continue on up to fill this big gap that it had. TVIX, that's one of the mini VIX ETNs that I trade. And this goes up when the stock market sells off. This guy went from 20 to 25, 26, 25 and a half, almost 26. Anyway, a five point run and a $20 instrument. That's why I'm a big fan of these type of charts instead of the ones that those moron kids are out there saying, trade penny stocks, trade low float $3 stocks on thousands of shares. Epic fail, that's how to blow up your freaking trading account. You have my word on me. What else is a hot chart? So TVIX is hot for intraday for next week and Nike. Just do it. Boom. This guy gapped up from 53.50 to 56. Note that that is less than 10%. So as I teach in my downloadable course called howtotradegaps.com, you can go there and it'll take you to the site. Gaps of less than 10% on cut pattern breakout continuations are gaps to buy. Gaps of over 10%, you got to evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis, but usually more cautiously. But if it's a minor, small gap of less than 10% of the underlying price, it makes for a good continuation. The validity of my approach is, is legendary. Test it out for yourself. Anyway, this guy ran up well worth considering if, and only if, it breaks the 60. Notice too, please, why I say never buy nines. You know that whenever you're evaluating an educator, look at the consistency of the success of their approaches on a wide variety of charts and see how smart the patterns are and how well they work out. Uh, you know, not just cherry pick charts here and there, but on the, the long haul, right? We're all in it for the long term. So my don't buy nines rule, which I publish in Stocks and Commodities too, is very accurate here. You can see nines are where you sell. You buy the low, you buy the cut pattern breakout, you buy the low area, on a continuation run up, right? A large green candle tells you got momentum on high volume. So that's a breakout in progress, but you sell anything with a nine in it. Nines are good exit regions. I gave you guys the trigger on the Saturday uh, that this would be a good play if you're a currency trader. Uh, the strategic point, as I mentioned last week, holds true for the upcoming week, and that is the Japan yen is going down. So things trading against the yen, whether it's the euro, the pound, or the US dollar, all those charts are up. The euro yen was my pick last week. Nailed it out of the park, baby. Ching. How much money could you have made if you took my call last Saturday on this call? Anyway, it's my favorite for the upcoming week ahead too. We we ride the trend until it stops uh, until it stops trending. So breakouts are the way to trade the markets intelligently professionally and strategically up at new highs. So you just have to avoid the false breakouts by setting a false breakout filter, which I do for my traders and my various alert services, but that's what you have to do to avoid false breakouts. Okay. And that'll do it for another episode. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the channel, feel free to subscribe, add a comment or question in the area below, uh, ask questions and I'll give you a quick answer if I can as well. So until next uh, episode, until next time, Trade with passion, trade intelligently with focus, trade with very tight stops, use position sizing and scaling, trade wide, meaning multiple instruments, not just a few, uh, and go get them. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.